Wow, what a morning. What a beautiful, what a beautiful morning. Hallelujah. The Lord likes newness. He doesn't want, he doesn't like the same, oh, grind, oh, grind, oh, grind, oh, grind. You know what I mean? So what does that mean? He brings life in an everyday different and he does it in a he does it in such a unique way it's 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 always like fresh and today i felt that that god was doing such a beautiful fresh thing he was ministering to needs and uh and he does it in such a unique way you know i, I we could pray every day and say lord touch her and help her and all of her troubles. And then we'd be done with it. Done with it. We'd walk away from it and say we did something. No. When God does something, he does it in such a unique way. It's such a special way. And I felt like he's done that today. He's done something special for everyone in this line. Whether, you, whether it was something where we spoke your name and we ministered to you. Or those that were in the shadows. Listening. See, God not only ministers to the named one, but he ministers to those in the shadows as well. Just like uh, it was said, that's how God is. You know, uh, when you're being used of the Lord and you're ministering to someone, at the same time, God is ministering to the one who's ministering to the person. It's as if he just doesn't, it's just not within God to direct one prayer, one place, and let everybody else kind of fall on the side. No, that's not him. He, he's, just, he's just a unique, wonderful God. The more I live and know God, the more beautiful I see him. I see him and how he does things. And I remember being in the shadows. And the, and the Lord was, uh, he, he brought me into this, he gave me this little vision, you know, because I'm very visional. I, I, I learn more by when he gives me a vision than I do by any other method maybe. But uh, he had me go into this hallway and on one side was this wall of martyrs. Those who had uh, lost their lives for him. And you know what he said to me? He he said, "Have you seen have you seen these that have given their life for me?" And he wanted me to notice that there that there are those who go through things and that they freely, it's not about a grudging give, it is about they just freely, it was like they, they laid down their life for him. It was, it was just a love, it's like a love story. And he just wanted me to notice that. And I was in this little hallway and it kind of circled around. And, and as I circled around, I looked on the right and there, and there was all windows. And I looked through the windows and I saw the world. And uh, it was as if the Lord was just letting me see a focus of his the things that he he sees he sees those who have given you know freely given and it's it was an act of love it was an act of love on those who were martyred who were who had given their life it was that act of love that they stood up in the face of an enemy was such a threat to them and yet they did not deny him but they but they and I can just I can just see this smile on the faces of those who just stood in the face of their enemy. And it was a smile uh, because not because they were trying to make any impression upon the enemy. No, the smile was just because God was standing with them. He was there with them. His presence was there with them as if you know, like I kind of vision like Stephen, when they were stoning him, and he had this vision, and that vision just, he focused on that vision because it's so marvelous that God gave a distraction to Stephen, and 
I almost, I don't want to say that he didn't feel the pelts, but it's almost like those pelts didn't mean a thing. What he was seeing, what he felt was, was so much more. And this is what these martyrs, they had that smile. As if God was there and he was distracting whatever was going to happen to them. What a beautiful God we serve. You know, uh, the world sees it as harsh. But God sees it differently because God's involved with it. He's with them. And then I looked out and I saw the world. That's God. He, he sees the world. He sees all of it. And his heart's there. And he wanted to share that with me. He shared. Then he brought me around. I was, I was in the shadow. But he shared while I was in the shadow. There's something about being in the shadow. And I'm not talking about the shadow of his presence. I'm talking about the the shadow of hiding a place where you're not being seen. And I was in that shadow. I didn't want to be seen. And God chose to share with me while I was there. What a beautiful thing that God can do when we're in the shadow. He can reveal a lot of things to us. And then they came around and he, he showed me this bright light. And he said, I want you to go out there in that bright light. I want you to be seen. And this is during the time that my husband and I took on a small home mission type church in Stockton. The Kenneth Haney and had uh, authorized us to do so. Brother Crownover's little church. Brother Crownover moved into... Uh, he went to the school of, you know, in uh, Missouri. Uh, the school in which you go to after you graduate from four years of college at the Christian school. I mean, the the uh, college. Then you go on to this one. And that's where he went. But we took his little work. And, uh, and the Lord said, I want you to get out there. I want you to be out. You're going to, you're going to be out in front. And I want you. To, I want you to be there. And uh, when God does things in the shadow, He prepares you for the light. When He it's time to to bring you out in the light, He's prepared you in those shadows. And that's what He did for me. Just wanted to share that. Also, uh, then the Lord prompted me to speak to the sorrow and tell Him to pack its bags. And I, and, and I said to that sorrow that was packing the bags, you're going to leave. You're moving out. And victory is moving in. So get ready for a change. And, you know, God is awesome. In a sense, he was speaking into her life, sending his word to heal and to deliver. And this is how God does. He speaks to the prayer warrior. He makes it a part of, he makes us a part of things. He, he doesn't want us to just be a, a, a puppet. But he wants us, he's sharing himself. So he shares things with us. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience serving the Lord. There was one who said uh, they lost the joy. Well, the scripture tells us where joy is. It's in the, in the 16th. 16th chapter of Psalms in the 11th verse. It says, uh, you will show me the path of life. In his presence is fullness of joy. And at his right hands, pleasures forevermore. If you're looking for joy, get into his presence. Just and I'm not saying uh, that if you feel like you've lost joy, no. I, I'm just saying it, that's what the scripture says, that joy is there. And getting into his presence is a rich, 
place to be. And to be on this line of prayer is a rich place to be. Because why? Because we are standing in the presence of our living God. He is here. He's alive. He's doing unique things. He wants us to be a part of that. You know, uh, I woke up this morning. I went to bed last night. And I'm, I don't know what I'm, I don't know. You know, sometimes the Lord doesn't drop anything in for me to bring to the table. And I, I think I've said this before, but sometimes the Lord just waits. He just, you know, he, that's just how he is. He's in charge. I'm not in charge, thank God. <laughs> but he's in charge. And I, I, I wake up, and it is literally uh, 4.30. I was, and I, I didn't get up at 3.30. I slept on a little bit. It was like 2, 2.48, you know. And I looked at my, my uh, so I said, I, I got a few more minutes. So I went, I went back to sleep and here I wake up at 4.30. And I, I, when I see the time, I go, oh my, I got to get up. And I got to get ready. And as I rise up out of my bed, the word trust is deposited in my head. And I'm going, but and me and the Lord have this little, sometimes I talk to him about what he gives me. And I go, Lord, I think I've already talked to them about trust. I mean, is that what I, is that what you really want me to do? Talk to them again about trust? And, uh, and I know the Lord, once he drops it there, you know, uh, it's as if he doesn't want to talk about, you know, a change in it or anything. It's just like, that's it. That's what I want. And so, uh, I said, okay. Well, here he is, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm getting here. Uh, he dropped, he deposited trust in my head. Now I got to find scripture. So I'm scurry, just scurrying to get that together. And, uh, and I'm in awe because when I was start opening the, the scripture to whatever it is that the Lord's given to me, uh, it, it's just amazement to me. It's like so rich. It's like, you know what? Uh, I went to the bank today and I, I drew out some money because because the Lord wanted me to draw this out. And now I'm here and I want to give the this this the riches of his glory. I want to, I'm gonna bring it to the table because he knows what he's doing. Far more than what I know what I'm doing. <laughs> he, he's just awesome. So um, here I am uh, you know, checking out these the scripture. And uh, what do I find? Just in Psalms alone, there's over 43 verses about trust. And I'm thinking, you know, God, you just want, there's some things that you just shout out. It's as if you're making this, uh, this very strong statement. And that's what I saw today. I saw that strong thread that God wants uh, us to understand that trust is a big thing. It's the trust is 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 in the seat of faith. When you start having faith, now trust is going to step in and and it's going to begin to deal. Uh, it's it's going to it's going to start compounding one thing after another about. You know, the seat of faith also is a part of trusting the God with whom you have faith in. So today I'm going to take you down this little road that uh, the Lord's given me in his word. And we are going to talk a little bit about this word called trust. We're going to start in Psalms uh, 511. It says, but let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. And I'm telling you, Sister Wilkes, that's what you were doing. You brought rejoicing to the table this morning. Let all those that put their trust in thee rejoice. No, 
not be sad. Uh, let not be full of sorrow. No, it says to rejoice. Let them ever shout with joy because thou defendest them. And let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Let them ever shout with joy because what? Thou defendest. And I'm thinking about Sister uh, Crump, how you saw this. You had this dream and you saw Jesus and he was there. And he was in like the shadows. He was there all around in that circumstance he was in. You see, the God of joy was in the midst of your troubles and your sorrows or whatever it was that you were going through. And God was there with you in it. And when we discover, you know, it, it's whatever's got our attention. And sometimes our attention just is on the wrong thing. And we don't see, we don't see the Lord that he's there with us. And we don't see that he's wanting to bring more than, he wants to add to uh, something that's going on in us that's unpleasant. He wants to add something good to it. He wants to bring, he wants to bring in the midst of it a shouting, rejoicing party. <laughs> Can you see that? Hallelujah. Can you see what he's trying to do in us? Jesus. In all of us. Jesus. And God's defending us. Thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. You see, this whole world likes to focus on all the negative stuff. And that's what they are flooding us with every time you get in any source of, of uh, technology where the airway is, you know, their advertisements are coming through. It's all negative. It's just all this and all that. And, and we're just being loaded with negativity. But that's not God. No, God is in the business of Wanting you to have joy. Wanting you to have pleasures forevermore. Uh, he wants you to, to have his countenance shining on you. And, and it, it's all about the good. You know, all things work together for the good. See, it's all about that. And it's just that he's trying to get our attention. He's, he's, he, I noticed that Sister... Uh, Crumpy said he was moving around. No, he wasn't just standing there. But he was moving. He was trying to get your attention. For thou, Lord, will bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass them as with a shield. Now think about that. He wants to bless the righteous. And he says, with favor. And he says, with favor wilt thou come past him as with a shield. God is a protector. And he said, just get your attention on me. Get your trust in me. And all those things you're going through will be just like Stephen. The attraction to see in him is so beautiful that what, but. All the negative kind of things that's going on about him just hasn't, isn't registering because the focus now is on this great and wonderful God who is doing things good, wanting to bless us, wanting to bring favor, wanting to compass us with, with a shield, with, with a protection. This is in God, and this is, this is Psalms 56 and 4 now. In God, I will praise the word. His word, and in God I will have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh will do unto me. Now, see, this is someone who has now understood something that God's word is powerful and that it's sitting high up and it's available. Reach up and receive it. Reach up and receive that word. 
put it into your soul. And then I will put my trust in him because he's given me his word. See, trust has a lot to do with the integrity of the person you're trusting in. And God's integrity is proven over and over and over to be perfect. He is perfect. He's not just almost with integrity. He is perfect in integrity. His word is true. He will keep his word. He won't deviate from it. If he said it, he'll do it. And you and, and you know, there's no respect to a person's. It's all about, uh, it's all about where you're casting your eyes and what you're trusting in. It's all about that because he's solid. He's not. He's not. He's not. He's unmovable. You're, you're not going to move him. You're not going to jar him out of that integrity. So you know, putting your focus on him and his word, what he says. And then all this, all this other stuff is just going to dance around you, but it's not going to, it's not going to do what it's trying to do, because you're not, you're not even looking at it. I will not fear what flesh will do unto me. You see, why, why will I not fear? <laughs> because, because I have a God who is so big that whatever is going on is, it will be like a fling of His finger. Just fling it off. Get it out of your way. And God will I praise his word. And in the word, Lord will I praise his word. In other words, uh, it, word is the, is the uh, key that unlocks the prison that the enemy wants you to stay in. So once you get in his word and start reading what he, he says, it just, it just is so powerful that it it smashes the lies the enemy is trying to tell us and we we don't have fear because fear is is just um a tactic that the enemy has but god's god says uh well, in psalms 91 says uh, i will not fear you know it says it in several verses i i will not fear and then the he goes into all these great things that could be a very fearful thing. The destruction at noonday and the, and the pestilence at, at uh, night. and Just all kinds of things that would be a scary thing. But it says, I, I will not fear. Why? Because God is there with me. No matter where I'm at, what's going on. He's there and he's blocking things that, that he doesn't want to come. He said it's with favor that he compasses us with a shield. That's God. In God have I put my trust. This is the 11th verse of 56. I will not be afraid what man can do unto me. They, uh, thy vows are upon me, O God, and I will render praises unto thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. And there's that uh, sickness He's delivered my soul from death. Why? Because God sent his word to deliver me. God sent his word. That's what he does for us. And wilt not thou deliver my feet from falling? That I may walk before God in the light of the living. He, he, will, not, he will not, uh, will not thou deliver my feet from falling? Yes, God is there. He is there to catch you. What did he say in Psalm 91? He sends his angels to bear you up in their hands. Yes. That you, that you're, that you may not uh, uh, stumble over just a tiny little rock. Yeah. Just a tiny rock. My God. God don't want you to stumble. So his angels are in charge of bearing you up in their hands. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That I may walk before God in the light of the living. You see what the word does? Now, I, I just took some word out of, the, out of Psalms 91 and, and brought it into light with this scripture right here. That's what knowing the word does for you. 
It just bounces around. It's like, it's like confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. God is saying, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And every, in every verse, he is saying that, I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. It's all as if he wants to shout at us. Yes. Said, get, get your attention off of that and upon me. My God. The one who is there to deliver you and to heal you and to whatever he is. He can do those things. Thank you. And you know, he works by faith. So faith is very is the ingredient. Yes. Faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Meaning, we hope to be healed. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we can actually see ourselves being healed if we will look good enough into what God can do. And when I talk about healing, it's not about healing, just about some physical suffering in our body that's not feeling well. Also, for every part of us, our mental state, our emotional state, he wants to heal. Yep. And sometimes he's, he's using some little thing that's uncomfortable so that he can, he can bring us into the understanding that we, that, He's going to heal us in this other place. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's these little steps that God is bringing us through. It's layer by layer, you know, platform by platform. And we just keep rising up higher and higher and higher. And our faith and our, and our trust in Him and everything just kind of, you know, God's just in business of taking care of us and healing us and bringing us into a more perfect state. It says here that I may walk before God in the light of the living, not on the pathway of death. That's what sin does. But no, on that pathway of where it's lit up, this beautiful presence of God is standing on that, on the road, hallelujah to heaven, the road to, uh, to this, this small portion of our eternal existence we are just here for a short time believe me it is short i don't know how i don't know how i didn't notice but how fast my life went and now i'm on the latter part of my life and i'm looking back sometimes on on the trail and i'm going man that was fast that was really fast and here i am you know, I'm getting ready to come into that place where God's got us all aimed at, that place of eternal life. And I see that I am at, talking way past the time. Sorry, Sister Wilkes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right here. Amen. I have kids. Kids are coming to my door. So <laughs> Okay. No worries. Uh, and their timing is good. We took the time to just be in the presence of the Lord today. And thank you. I thank the Lord for his presence. I thank the Lord for you, Sister Zeno. And um, my, I'm a big baby when it comes to um, not having people in my life. So <laughs> I don't want to hear you talk about your time being short. You know, um, I know that <laughs> the Lord knows everything. He knows the day we're born and the day we'll rejoice and be with him. But um, you are a treasure to me. And my heart can't handle that kind of thinking. But I thank the Lord for the time that we have with you and the season that you've just been pouring out so much. And um, and I pray that we'll have the consistency and recording your the teaching and how the Lord moves through you because this it will last, you know. So um, I thank the Lord for you. And I mean that from my heart. You're such an awesome teacher. Um, I just, I just <laughs> follow your lead, and, and uh, you're my elder, and I appreciate you. Um, I, I rejoice in your aging. Don't think anything's wrong with it. I'm not one of those kind of people that despise the elderly. I love it. I love the wisdom that you've gained over the years, and um, you're turning around and you're pouring out. The Lord's allowing you to pour it back out on us, that we can be better and stronger. Thank you for your wisdom. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for, for the gift that you've given us and Sister Zeno. 
in this season of life, God. It's amazing that you connected us together, oh God. And you're allowing her to just pour in, oh God. As you pour into her, she's just pouring out in simplicity, God. And I thank you for it. Hallelujah. I pray, oh God, that we will receive it. We'll receive all the teaching, all the instruction, all the encouragement, everything that you're pouring in us through her, God, that our souls will readily receive, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this morning, everything that you're doing, that there's nobody like you, God, who can really understand who you are and how you do what you do. But Lord, we just present ourselves as children. We're just willing to go whichever way you go and say whatever you say and do whatever you do, God. You're our Father and we follow you, God. Hallelujah. I thank you for every lady on this line, God. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will bless them today. Hallelujah. Everywhere, everything, everything that they do today, that you will be there and they will know that your presence is with them, God, that, that we will not forget, God, that you're walking with us. Whether we were face good times or whether we face challenges that it'll be on the forefront of our mind that you are with us oh god hallelujah that we will be reminded today that you are with us no matter what we face our trust is in you hallelujah thank you for equipping us this morning god in the name of jesus thank you for new joy hallelujah thank you for another level of faith Hallelujah. Thank you for stirring us up this morning, yes, oh God. Ikorabasata, reminding yes, us that it's you, Horabasata, that you hold our lives in your hands, oh God, and you're directing us and you're guiding us into your will, God. I thank you. Help us to remember today. Let it be on the forefront of our minds, oh God. When we see our situation, God, we won't see the situation, but we'll see you exalted. Oh God, I pray for a spirit of worship to be on each lady today as we go through this day, God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Would you bless us with joy this morning? Thank you. Peace this morning. A confidence in you this morning, God. That we won't even be able to hear the raging and the roaring of the enemy. All we'll hear is your promises, God. Remind us, oh God, that you're with us every step of the way. Prepare each of us, oh God, for what you have. For yes, us, Lord God, to be in the spirit, God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, 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 let your will be done, oh God, let your perfect will be performed, thank you, Lord, put it in my heart, it's in you that I trust, it's in you that I find joy this morning, God, it's in you that I find peace, let your will be done, oh God, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus name. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. we thank you, and we praise you, Jesus. Jesus' yes, name. Lord. God bless you, ladies.